I'm in danger of making this uh, video way too grandiose in terms of its psychological charge, but I'm gonna go there anyway. I'm trying to make sense of what has been happening with me in terms of uh, my olfactory taste this year. I made very explicit, clever, in my opinion, plans of what I was going to explore and try month by month. Well, <laughs> most of it didn't come true. And today I'm going to show you the absolutely most used perfumes in my collection to date, starting from roughly like Christmas of uh, last year. Alright, and we're gonna st we're kind of like gonna start from now and loop which loops us all the way back to what was happening last winter. Um, I bought a decant of room 1015 Holy Rose and by accident I bought two of them just a, a second one just two weeks ago. The thing is that not only the incense rose remains to be a very elusive concept that I struggle with. I have a few options in my collection if you're curious to learn more about heavier, uh, more controversial, complex rose-centric scents, please leave a comment below. We can kind of cue a video like that in the future. But uh, long story short, oh, here we go, I have some, some paper to try things. Uh, Holy Rose just impressed me instantly. Instantly, I was like, I want to learn more. To me, this was very almost weed-like, patchouli, thick, almost oily surrounding around the, the rose. Rose here is not is not very Bulgarian, that, that's a variation that's very famous, it's kind of one of the cliche classic rose type accords, but to me it's not too sour. I would say that a typical Bulgarian rose would be Un Rose by Frederick Mal, Rose by Molinard, La Majestel Rose by Serge Lutens, um, La Fille de Berlin, also by Serge Lutens. So, luckily for me, there's the, the kind of slight sourness of this rose has nothing to do with the Bulgarian rose oil. And the greenness here has nothing to do with any of these kind of fresh basilic or bergamotti roses like, I don't know, Dona Verde by Valentino, that's bergamot and rose, or a basilic and rose, which is something by L'Artisan Parfumé, Rose Privé, I think. Uh, one of the most famous, currently famous niche green fresh roses is Rose Cuivre by Frederick Mal. None of that either. The greenness here, to me, it's way more kind of dampy, patchouli, almost weed-like. I don't know. To me, it has a bit of a flavor of weed <laughs> to it. Or like a good joint. I don't know for which reason. So it's, it's heavier, it's, head, it's not heady, it's more hearty. And the incense here, I think that's what gives it just a teeny, teeny bit of this kind of sour twist. And I love it. I know that some people online say that it's, it's truly niche, but it's weird and it's really wearable. I used up almost the whole decan. So this is from Sandbird. They, they, I think they still have it in stock. If you're curious, you'll see, find a link below. Um, eight mil, and I think I used up six. I have two decans, so I have a total almost, um, yeah, not almost, exactly 16 milliliters. We'll see how that goes. It's potent, it's bright, it has, Holy Rose has a lot of presence, and I almost wish I had it last winter, though nothing stops me so far from wearing it on the slightly drier days in Florida, because right now we're in the midst of the most stickiest, the most humid, the most unbearable, weather seasons that it's I usually wear Holy Rose at home because I'm not sure I'll survive it if I step outside. That said, absolutely obsessed, have a backup and if 16 milliliters is not going to be enough I may, 
I just may start hunting after a bottle. That said, my general interest in the brand Room 1015 is like all times high because, and going back to last Christmas and winter, I had Cherry Punk in my collection, again got it from Sunbird, for probably over a year before I actually picked it up and asked myself, why do I even have this if I'm not gonna wear it? So I started, started wearing it mostly for the comparison with Lost Cherry by Tom Ford. And very quickly I realized this is emerging as a quick favorite. I do prefer it over Lost Cherry by Tom Ford because Cherry Punk is the same kind of spicy, warm, sweet cherry, but it has a backup of leather and scotch. And in my view, it's, it has way more of a straight spine and has way more of a character than Lost Cherry. Lost Cherry to me is way more toward hookah bar. This is way more into like kind of a, a whiskey lounge. Not my olfactory profile. I'm not a big fan of sweet cherries at all. And yet, and yet I love it. I love it so much that again used up six meal just probably in a month and a half and I got so lucky that I found it on Mercari and I bought the bottle. I have a kind of a mini rule not buying a bottle before I fully finish all the samples and decants. This is definitely an exception but to be honest I jumped on it before this ran out because I never ever see room 1015 uh, on second-hand sale sites. So this one for, was from Mercari and it's such a rare occurrence that I kind of was like, all right, we're gonna take an exception to the rule because I don't think I'll see it again anytime soon. I never owned a bottle from the Room 1015. It came without a box, but I can tell you that it, <laughs> first thing first, this is 50 mil, right? Yep. It looks a little smaller than, than what I anticipated the make is pretty good, however, I wouldn't call this very luxury or, um, you know, yeah. It's reasonably high quality, but I wouldn't call it luxury. Just a remark for those of you who really care about the bottle design, I do. And for the price that they're selling at full price, I think that's all right. If the price climbed any higher, I would be asking some questions about the packaging, otherwise, I'm really happy and, like, and I do like dark colored glass. That's one of my uh, little weaknesses. I do like bottles like that. So yeah, the sweet spicy cherry with scotch and leather, Cherry Punk by Room 1015. Super unique fragrance. Still haven't found anything similar to it beside the, you know, the famous Lost Cherry, but that I actually like less than this one. So that was a lucky find. I actually haven't shelved this in any holes, so that's a new. Also, something that I was really going for last winter was I was trying to find the perfect two or three leather accords in perfumery. I wanted to find almost a mono leather fragrance that I would call my, a staple in my collection. There are many, many options in uh, niche houses even more so in more rare and hard to find, very expensive niche houses. When it comes to a slightly more kind of lower tier niche, you know, something within a hundred dollars or uh, designer perfumery, you will be hard pressed to find anything worthy, to be honest. At least I haven't found anything new. I bought quite a few expensive bottles and yet the two sort of leathers, I would say leather-centric, maybe not mono-leather, but leather-centric fragrances that I used absolutely the, the most, and you can see the wear, is L'Artisan Parfumera Mon Umero 10, which is, to me, like, sort of, long story short, this is a very delicate, thin leather, almost like, you know, thin leather gloves. This is what kind of leather it is to me, with a touch of honey. Not overly sweet 
and powdery honey, not the pollen kind of honey that you can find in Killian fragrances or you know what I'm talking about? B by Zoologist. Not that kind. Smoother, thinner, but also not pea like honey that Sisley is guilty of and a lot of other perfumes that attempt honey. I would guess Chapard, Miel Sauvage, and a lot of other Miel type of um, fragrances. There, they try to execute Connie with this typical kind of almost, I wouldn't say bitterness, but like Connie can have a little bit of a twist to its taste. And often, unfortunately, in olfactory design, it falls smelling a little bit like a pea, like a really, really sweet, sugary pea. I don't know if I'm the only one who, who noticed that trend, but I think it's also another kind of way honey gets reproduced. This is very even, even leveled, kind of smoothed, not overly sweet, not overly sharp, a very smooth honey layer on top of that like thin, delicate leather glove. It is so elegant, it is so comfortable. And it's relatively inexpensive if you look um, if you look around online. So again, mon numero 10, specifically 10. I think the whole line, if I'm not mistaken, what was it dedicated to? Wasn't it dedicated to different kinds of leather? Can't remember. But mon numero 10 is definitely something I want to uh, keep in my collection. I used up 15 milliliters, probably at least eight of them this winter out of 30. These are so cute. They have been repackaged since then, so L'Artisan Parfumeur now comes with a tainted glass and black lid. I personally kind of do have a soft spot for their older packaging, so if I'm going to be looking for a backup bottle, I'll probably try to hunt down the one with the golden lid. It's beautiful in semi-cold weather. When it's not freezing, but this kind of windy, uncomfortable, I guess in Fahrenheit 50s and I would say in Celsius, something around like 10 Celsius. I imagine this would be absolutely divine in October in Scotland, something like that. So Monomer 10, so far the most comfortable, the most wearable and the most worn leather fragrance in my collection to date. And the secondary one, which I worn probably, so here we have how many, 30, 50, 40, that's such a bizarre uh, volume, 40 milliliters. This is Jill Sander Flanker, which is called Simply Touch of Mandarin. I know it has nothing to do with leather, but to me it's very leathery fragrance. If you've tried any of the Simply fragrances by Jill Sander, first of all, a very good designer brand from Germany. Uh, they make um, elegant, non-trivial, non-cliché, but easy to understand perfumes. I love their style of packaging. This is very high quality. Every single line here is very smooth and very polished. So I would say their bottle make is higher quality even than room 10, uh, 1015. However, finding them online, I'll be, to com be completely transparent, is a toss. Every once in a while, certain websites like FragranceNet or FragranceBuy.Canada or whatever, they just get like a, a kind of a throw of batch of different flankers and random bottles and then you never hear about them again. I'm not quite sure what's happening with Jill Sander perfume marketing because it's very sporadic. The only less understood marketing style, a branding style uh, than Jill Sander to me is Salvador Dali. I'm like I'm completely at loss who, how and when decides and how, how do they exist as a brand of fragrances because their presence is not quite there and yet they continue issue collections that you learn about kind of randomly. So I hope that Jill Sandrum will maybe will like modernize their marketing and will have a little bit more consistent access to why, when, what, to whom and where <laughs> can we find them. That said, touch of Mandarin to me. This is 
kind of like having a f new leather purse next to you when you're drinking an old-fashioned. It has a little bit of this like orange bitters facet to it that with the leather base and I started saying that simply as a line has a very recognizable to my taste recognizable kind of base of the perfume with one exception they have something poudre like in the pink um, pink liquid which is a huge departure from what simply really represents otherwise at least these flunkers that have like I think black black lead I would say that's a believable family of fragrances I, I can see how they all fit together touch of mandarin as I mentioned, it's like it's having a fresh leather purse right by you in a bar and sipping on an old-fashioned. I used up, how much is this? Well, probably fair, 20 mil. Yeah, that's not little, right? And a surprise blind buy. No planning or thought went into it, rather than my uh, obsession with the way Majda Bikali packages their perfumes. This is just... It's meditation central, isn't it? I got this fairly accessible, I think it was maybe 70 bucks. This is Z-Rub, I think, Z-Rub by Majda Bikali, and this is Tulip Noir with Oud. So black tulip and Oud. You would expect something so bitter and smoky. Not at all. It's very feisty to, a flo to, to be a floral with Oud. I, I would say, but it's feisty in this refreshingly sweet and almost scratchy bubbly way there's something scratchy and bubbly about the way this fragrance lives in the air and i mean again i, I probably should stop commenting on the bottle because it's it's i think it's clear to everyone i'm a big fan but the fragrance itself i bought it blindly i told you because of the bottle because i was curious about the brand was it was a good price but it's more green and vibrant and zesty on the blotter on a piece of paper and on my skin it gets sweeter, richer and a little bit darker. Surprisingly enough, I do recognize tulip here, which is not a common occurrence. The only fragrance that has tulip even in a more believable fashion would be Atelier Blayam Extraordinary Tulip that I still cannot find a bottle of. And I'm just going through one Sandbird decant after another. But this is definitely something sweeter, something more, more of a gourmand. But it's not nearly as dark and heavy as you would think about, you know, gourmand oud fragrances. To be honest, I'm not even sure where the wood is in this story. Maybe it's it's working somewhere on the background, kind of providing some solid support. But I don't really detect oud. If you have Zayrab, please let me know how much of oud you get on your skin. I don't. I was obsessed applying it at night, when I was going out at night, just obsessed. It's vibrant enough, yet sweet enough, unusual enough, and yet somewhat, there's kind of zestiness in it that kind of perks you up a little bit. It has a little bit of both worlds, which I think is genuinely hard to do. Um, sometimes when perfumer is trying to kind of put everything there at once, freshness, sweetness, darkness, smokiness, some patchouli, some woods in leather and this and that, it just becomes this concoction of things just falling apart. This is one example where you feel zestiness of, sort of green stalks. You feel the tulip. You feel a little, a little bit of this kind of sweet gourmand a little bit of powder a little bit and a solid 
not too sweet, not too bitter, not smoky at all base. It's, it's just so good. There is 120 ml, so nearly 4 ounces, and I used up how much? Probably, I would say, what does it look like? I would say 30 milliliters, maybe 20. That's how much I love it. It's, it's a surprise. I didn't expect to have it in my collection. I didn't expect to, to wear it with such fervent passion as I did. It's kind of a bit of a what? What happened here? Kind of thing for me. The comfort zone. When it comes to me trying to just feel peaceful, feel soothed, and have something ethereal but not pushy, it's kind of like soft nude of a fragrance. I have a whole video on that, but the two that I wore the most this year were Eau de Parfum Sea Lolita by Lolita Olympica. I must say, I still do prefer the Eau de Toilette version. It has more of a punchy pink pepper in it. This is somewhat kind of in the middle and less, less interesting version of it for me. Well, this is pretty much very aromatic pink pepper, soft floral. It's just very charming. When you apply it, people are not going to be asking what kind of perfume you're wearing. They'll just keep saying that, oh, you smell so good. This is the kind of Netflix and chill kind of perfume. This is the perfume you would wear when you don't want to smother anyone with a scent, but you just want them to keep leaning forward, trying to like touch your skin and smell you because it sits close. It's very comfy, it's very charming and romantic, but it's not sweet, it's not fresh, it's not overtly floral, it's not overtly fly, uh, spicy. It's just this kind of cuddly, little cocoon. And similar to that, but I would say away from pink peppery, kind of this light touch of spiciness, more toward creamy lilacs is Jill Sander style, I told you. And it's an amazing affordable designer brand if you can find it. I have a number of, of perfumes that are very similar in nature. So it was quite a surprise. I, if I'm not mistaken, I got it as a bottle exchange with a, with a, perfume, friend, a perfume, <laughs> perfume maniac friend here on YouTube. And when I smelled the first, I was like, oh yeah, it's just like creamy, lilac-y, very soothing, not too, again, I like that it's not too sweet. It's more of a creamy souffle rather than the condensed milk kind of sweetness. It's very respectful. Again, sits close to the skin, doesn't last very long, unfortunately. Again, if you're interested, style is the one that's white plastic with light purple um, edges. And yet, if I had to, I would kind of sort of maybe compare it with other creamy lilacs. I would say Amouage is way too sweet, it's like way more powerful. But I would say in a number, a, nar a number, like my name by Trussardi probably is the closest. I would say this kind of in the same character trait as uh, Pure Poison by Dior. And a number, a number of perfumes, and yet me I have told you like at least five bottles that are kind of sort of like that but this is the one that I kept going to it's just it's a no-brainer it's just so perfectly floral without lilac can be very soapy and here I don't feel soap I feel creamy kind of vanilla souffle of a lilac I can't see how much I used, but I think I used it almost every third day or so for three months, all spring. So these two are the most used in terms of kind of comfort zone and soft nudes for me. Now to morning perfumes and perfumes when I had to run out the door and I wanted something refreshing in a way, but not bitter, not too green, and not too pungent. 
I already showed it, but I'll show it again. Kalesha Delicat. I am a proud owner of two bottles. And I used up nearly, I would say, a third of it since I got it. It's, how many does it have? 50 mil. So probably, I would say 20. I used up 20 starting late February. For me, it's such a elegant, elusive, and complex florals that I've been trying to describe it for many years. I've made posts, I mentioned it in videos, and every time I stumble. It reminds me of my childhood, but I don't know what, what in my childhood. It has this soothing, kind of flashback dream type of quality to me. It's not powdery, it's floral, but it's not stringent, it's not piercing, it's not overtly floral either. It's just perfect. I've been searching in circles for anything that I could recommend as even any like, close second to it. And the only thing that I found is not going to make things any easier for you. Just <laughs> disclaimer from the get-go. This is a Love Affair by Eisenberg. I don't use it nearly as much because this is, to me, superior. But it's somewhat to that, to that kind of dimension. Eisenberg, as far as I know, is only sold in certain European countries. I'm not even sure where exactly, and it's not, it cannot be easily found in the United States. Potentially on the gray market or second-hand market. But again, I told you, like, I tried. <laughs> but the solution that I came up with is probably still subpar. Maybe I just need to peruse that area of subtle, elegant florals more. There are so many of them, and yet I've tried this, I've tried that. A lot of a lot of times when it's a subtle floral, it's gonna be a musky rose or creamy slash powdery, a violet slash ruddy iris slash somewhat dusty ule, uh, what is it, carnation. That's pretty much where we land most of the time. Just to be fair, I'm gonna read you the official description, but I swear to God, it doesn't help. <laughs> At least it didn't help me to understand it any better. Aldehydes and along along, I don't like either, and I don't feel either in here. Middle notes are jasmine and rose, maybe, but in a very non-obvious way. Base notes are cedar and sandalwood. The only part that I kind of saw, or maybe, Detect is sandalwood. It's still not quite it. It's magical. That's all I can say. It's magical. It's discontinued. Yes, let's park this for now. I know it's painful to keep listening to. Another workhorse of a perfume. I wear it a lot when I just have to run out the door and it's a surprise. It's a surprise. It's a designer flanker that Beauty Meow, our beloved Beauty Meow have recommended all like two summers ago. I got myself 30 mil. This is Sky Blossom by Michael Kors. Sky Blossom specifically. There's like a thousand of those flankers. But this one, the sensual kind of think of like creamy lotion, almost Royal Musk by Mikalev kind of style with a little bit of this flowy refreshing white florals. Jasmine, not jasmine, I actually can't tell, but it's just so... it's so young and alluring and easy to wear and I like that this is neither sweet nor too floral. It's this soft lotion with a little bit of floral flavor and people love it on my skin. Everybody just loves it. It's not a complicated perfume. It's nothing that you, you want to study and like understand better. It's just a crowd pleaser. If you're looking for something, again, somewhat of a nude, but you want it to be a little bit more refreshing and floral, this is a perfect, 
perfect departure from just cozy fragrances towards something that has a little bit more of a silage, right? Like it, it, it does travel, it has a bit of a diffusivity to it. Look, I'm bare, I barely have 5 mil left. I used up, again, probably no less than 20 and I'm not gonna stop. I think I'm just gonna continue, I'm gonna kill it and we'll call it a day. I don't have a good replacement for it. I think I'll pretty much just continue with this and the last one that I'm gonna show you. But will I rebuy it? That's the tricky question, huh? I don't wanna be a hypocrite, I'm not sure. I loved it and I still, you can tell. But I'm a bit of a snob. <laughs> and I'm a bit spoiled. So I am always biased toward trying something new and trying something niche. I also have over 200 decants, probably more than that, maybe 300 or so. So I am very constantly working through my samples and trying to kind of expand my understanding of, um, of perfume brands. So going after a charming yet kind of casual flanker of Michael Kors is unlikely to happen for me. That said, if I see it in TJ Maxx or so for like 20 bucks, probably, probably will cut it and get it again. So if you're stopping by and you suddenly, I don't know how popular this flanker is or not, if you suddenly see Sky Blossom by Michael Kors and you like the description of soft kind of milky lotion with a little of this like freshness of white florals, beautiful and people love it. And the last one, which again I bought with high hopes, didn't use for over a year, and now start going absolutely nuts for, you can see, right, is Atkinson's My Fair Lily. I bought it during my expedition to find the best li white lily centric perfume. I found quite a few options. They're all beautiful and interesting in their own way. I still don't have the best lily scent. And that's why I haven't made that video yet. I love them all for different aspects of the white lily, but I haven't won the one, you know what I mean? So this I got, it's literally called My Fair Lily, okay? Has a, has the promise, this is a white lily scent. However, it's somewhat watery, uh, very, it's kind of like, it's more of a water lily. It has this kind of wetness to it. That's what I'm trying to explain. It's very light. It has none of the spiciness, heaviness, or animalic nature that white lilies truly have uh, when you smell them. So if you take the head, like the, the, the top notes of the lily, you add a little bit of this kind of water lily and kind of like this lotus type of um, accord there, you get my fair lily. And that's why I was disappointed in it when I bought it. So I was like, okay, this is not quite it for a lily scent. I put it on the shelf, I forgot about it. But when I stopped constantly putting it on that kind of measuring bar, is this the most realistic white lily scent, and just wore it as is. As a slightly watery, golden, very heady, very light, and kind of sensual. It's not, you would think that white lily scent would be very piercing, like Cartier Bazevole. That one would be way more like a needle. This, because it's so kind of watery and flowy, it's more sensual. It's very comfortable to wear in the mornings. It makes me feel very feminine uh, in in very unorthodox way. So I used up, how much is this? Well, I would say so the bottle is 100 mil or 120? 100 mil. I think this is at least 7 mil. And 
as I mentioned, as soon as I'm done with Sky Blossom by Michael Kors, I think I'm gonna kind of continue on this route. And I will also try to gather a whole pile of morning green, fresh eau de cologne type of fragrances that I have in decants and samples and try to work through them first. So what do we have here in the summary? I started liking sweet cherry scents, really bizarre kind of very vibrant and bubbly oody tulip is a, a complete anomaly <laughs> leather instead of finding something pungent and truly smoky leather my favorites and the most worn ones are very subtle and not I, I would say leather is at the heart of the accord but it's not mono leather either so with leather, I don't think I, I found my mono leather yet and might be not my thing at all. I tried a lot of things and maybe I should make a video kind of reporting on my progress. When it comes to comfort zone, pretty much the same stuff, just uh, these two stood, up, stood out in particular. And when it comes to the morning perfumes, the most worn ones, that's what we have. Here, I think I'm pretty true to myself. Would you expect that of me? I would. I think that's 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 not as a scary kind of identity threatening <laughs> kind of situation. The this, however, is a bit of a what happened here? <laughs> yep, that's my year so far. Waiting to hear from you guys. Uh, tell me about the shocks, surprises expected favorites, what have you been using the most? I'm not asking what you've been loving the most because there's way more there. I tried way more perfumes than this. But when I went and looked through all of my collection and just look at the bottle use, more or less remembering where we were before, this is what emerged, which is a little bit of a surprise to me. Um, just to give a bit of a benchmark, I was planning to wear a lot of Incensi Roses and incense in general to like make peace with it and find my favorite incense hasn't happened yet I tried but I didn't fell in love with very incensey fragrances yet and holy rose is probably the exception but incense I would say is plays a supportive role here rather than the front line leather exploration it was a lot of money I, would, I don't want to say wasted but like <laughs> invested in that exploration and I ended up wearing my existing fragrances the most and not the ones that I knew to my collection this and this I would say it's okay and I'm glad that I'm using the perfumes that I expect myself to like but I really wanted to get more into green eau de cologne like I also wanted to find my favorite cologne type of scent and I didn't I tried a few here and there and I'll try to like dedicate a video to that to just to do a report for you of what what I've tried and what I've learned about classic eau de cologne scents but it was not organic somehow it just wasn't I really wanted to explore asmantus and peach centric scents and I did, but I didn't fall in love with it. I just kind of sprayed a few options that I had in my collections. Didn't stick. It just didn't catch me. I wanted to spend all my mornings late spring wearing musky and green roses. Didn't happen at all. Tried a few times. No. Just, ugh, no. What else did not happen? <laughs> a lot of things that I planned did not quite land in practice and I wonder if it's the classic case of you know plans are useless but planning is essential or if somehow my tastes are changing and I'm in kind of a denial about this what do you think any thoughts on the matter anything that's been happening with you in the past year let's talk about this Let's get, let, let's, let's get a group therapy, talking therapy, in the comments section below and exchange notes on how it's going so far. We'll be waiting for your comments. 
Thank you for liking and subscribing and I'll see you in the next one.